All right, so in this video, I'm going to be covering um, section 1-1, statistical critical um, and critical thinking. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So what you should have is you should have the notes. You should have in front of you your notes, uh, the blank notes that I that's projected on the screen. Uh, so uh, be a good idea if you follow along. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's start with the following. Let's start with the question. Oops. Uh, the question: uh, What is statistics? <clears throat> All right, so um, here's one definition of statistics that I think kind of encompasses everything. There's many, many different ways to describe it, but here it is. So statistics um, describe, sorry, this thing is covering me. So statistic is the analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. So the collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. So uh, to visualize this, uh, it looks something like this. So you have a population, right? Populations are usually huge. So instead of working with the population, we're going to collect a sample, right? That's the first step, collect a sample. And then we're going to analyze that data, uh, that data, the sample data, uh, which means perform calculations on data, create graphs, apply statistical methods, and determine statistical uh, significance. So all of these stuff are very important in the statistics process, the analyzing part. And that's what we're going to talk about later on in the semester. And then so once you collect data, you analyze it. The third step is uh, we're going to interpret it. So the entire semester is going to is going to cover these three things. Collection of data, analyze data, interpretation of the data. Uh, so data is very important. So let's take a look at some data that I have. So um, here I have data for uh, final grades of a stat course. Actually, this is real data from my prior semester. So 233 students in fall of 2018. So I taught three classes and here's the data. It's actually more than this, but I had to cut it off because it's there's just so many uh, students. Um, so you take a look at the data. I mean, what do you notice? It's it's um it's hard, right? It's 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 difficult and boring just to look at data. So what you really want to know is, well, let's just summarize it. Like, what's the summary of this data? And that's part of what statistic is. Is part of statistics is just summarizing data. So for example, you might want to know, like, uh, what's the percentage of students who pass? What's the percentage of students who didn't pass for that particular semester? Uh, so I already have calculated this data for you guys. So here it is. So in 2018 or fall 2018, 200, out of 233 students, 77.6% of them passed, 22.4% of them did not pass. So that's just a couple of uh, statistics for you guys from the data. Now, you might want to know something else, right? You might want to know, well, what's the average grade or what's the mean? So in, in statistics, we call it the mean, right? So what's the mean grade for the students? So of all the students, if I was to add up all the values and then divide by the number of students, um, their average or their, their mean grade was 78.4%, right? And then you also may want to know, well, what percentage of students got an A, B, C, D, or an F? So here's the breakdown. I, I have that for you guys as well. So now what's my point? So statistics involves broadly speaking, two types of statistics. The first one is called descriptive statistics. And that's just summarizing data, right? That's what I just showed you guys. Just sh summarizing data, show, uh, uh, descriptive statistics uh, involves like the mean, like things like uh, the mean, the percentage of those who pass and whatnot. Relatively speaking, descriptive statistic is easier than what we have on the right, which is inferential statistics. So later on, when we get to inferential statistics, that's going to be uh, pretty challenging. Uh, inferential statistics does involve the descriptives as well, because, you know, we, we want to analyze. Uh, when analyzing, we need to calculate, do a lot of calculations or finding uh, descriptive statistics. But inferential statistics takes it one more step. Uh, what it does is we collect sample and then we make an inference on the population. So here are some examples of inferential statistics. Uh, 
<clears throat> so I, I want to take a look in uh, more deeper into uh, this example. Um, so the presidential approval rating, this is something that uh, the firms in the United States, they they want to they calculate every week the presidential approval rating. Uh, but what's the problem? What's the difficulty with trying to figure out the percentage of people who approve of the president? So here's the biggest problem. The population of the United States is 250 million. So that's a lot of people. I think this is only the adults or yeah, so I, I believe this is only the adults. Uh, that's a lot of people to get to. So the difficulty is getting to everybody. In addition to that, a lot of people change their mind, right? Day by day or week by week or month by month. Uh, so what we do or what statistical firms do is they take a sample, a random sample of, say, a thousand people. So they get a sample of random sample of a thousand people. They ask the student, uh, the people, you know, what, what do you um, do you approve of the president? And from the sample, we make a judgment or we uh, an inference about the population, about whether what does the whole entire population think about. So that's an example of inferential statistics. Um, there are some three key terms you got to know when we're dealing with inferential statistics and statistics in general. Uh, data population sample you got to be clear on what you're what you're looking at like what is your data what is the population that you're interested in and what is a sample right so let's take a look at an example and describe those three things so if let's go back to our notes and let's look at this example so this example here says Describe the population, oops, highlight instead. Describe the population, the sample, and the data being collected in the following study. Uh, so here we have, uh, we're interested in the average or mean amount of money first year college students have FCC, Fresno City College, spent on school supplies. We randomly surveyed 100 first year FFC, uh, FCC student. So we're going to describe the population, the sample, and the data. So the population, so the pop in this uh, example is all first year FCC students. So that is our population. So you gotta be first year, right? If you're second year or if you're third year, you're not part of this population. So not all Fresno City students are part of, the, of this um, population. If you go to Reedley, you're not part of this population, right? If you're a first year college student at Reedley, you don't count as well. So we're, we gotta be specific and be clear on what the population is. So in this, in this problem, in this case, the population are first year FCC college students. All right, now what is the sample? How would we describe the sample? So the sample in this case is those surveyed uh, those 100 surveyed first year FCC student, right? So 100 surveyed uh, first year FCC student. Okay, and then now uh, this the uh, the data. So how would we describe the data, right? So in this problem, the data is. Um, the amount spent by each of those students, right? So the amount spent on school supplies for, and, and I'm just going to put students, but we know it's uh, first year college student, uh, FCC students, but just to shorthand it, I'm just going to put students. All right. So again, you got to be clear on those three things. What is the population that I'm dealing with? What is the sample? What is the data? Right. So the data amount of money spent on school supplies for first year FCC students. So uh, if they spent money on uh, lunch, that doesn't count. Right. It's got to be only for school supplies. All right. So before I move on, any questions before I move on?
Okay, so that's fine. I, I don't see any questions, but feel free to put it into the chat box or speak up if you if you do have a question. Uh, this number, uh, this problem, I'll let you guys uh, work on that on your own time. Okay, so before we get into statistical significance, um, we still have some things I want to go over. Uh, so sampling is very important, right? So in, in collecting data, sampling um, is very, the, the sampling method is very uh, important. A good sample includes random sampling. And in general, uh, voluntary sample or voluntary response sample is is not good. It's usually bad. So, random sampling is ideal. Voluntary response sample is usually bad, but it's often it's widely used. Um, maybe just because it's for convenience, right? Voluntary response sample. What does that mean? Well, as the name describe, the people who um, are part of the sample, they volunteer to be part of the sample, right? So an example of voluntary response sample would be uh, like if if you have like a, you know, a, a political website like Bloomberg News and they have a poll on their website, right? People who respond to that poll, they're, they're volunteering um, themselves to respond to the poll. And that's not really not uh, a fair poll right like people who go on Bloomberg News are probably more left-leaning they're more liberal and you're not going to get um, a good representation of what all Americans think if you have a poll on Bloomberg News or it can be Fox News right Fox News has more right-leaning people more conservative uh, MSNBC has more left-leaning so you know polls on those are not um, accurate or not representative of the population so hopefully that makes sense so voluntary response bad usually bad uh, but widely used a good sample includes random sampling okay so now let's talk about something that's pretty important in this class uh, which is statistical significance um, we're gonna be we're just gonna get a, a, a small dose of it this time or right now but later on we're gonna talk about it a lot more so uh, for now statistical signif significance is achieved in a study when we get a result that is very unlikely to occur by chance. So I uh, bold or I had this in different color because this is important. Very unlikely to occur by chance. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at <clears throat> an example here. So let's say uh, we have a company that develops a diet pill and conducts a study to determine its effectiveness. After six months of taking the diet pill, consider the three scenarios. So think of the three scenarios like alternate, alternative universes. Um, assuming that the diet pill has no effect. So we're going to assume that the diet pill has no effect, uh, meaning that the mean weight loss of the people who took it was zero, of the subjects who were was zero. So their mean weight loss was zero. Right, so the diet pill. We're going to assume that doesn't um, work. Given that assumption, decide whether each of the results is significantly statistically significant. All right, and that's this is what a lot of uh, this is what um, a lot of drug companies do when they when they <clears throat> conduct a study whether their drug is effective. They assume that it doesn't work, right? And based off of the assumption, they collect data. And then they make a judgment based off of, the, of that assumption. Um, okay, so after six, scenario number one, after six months, the mean weight loss of the 100 participants was 0 0.34 pounds. That's scenario number one. So think of it like alter, alternative scenarios right, or universes, right? So in universe one, scenario one, the mean weight loss was 0.34 pounds. In scenario number two, after six months, 100 participants, the mean weight loss was 5.6 pounds. And then for scenario three, after six months, the mean weight loss for the 100 participants was 14.7 pounds. And so the question here is for each of these scenario, assuming that the diet pill had no effect and the weight loss should have been zero, right? The average weight loss should have been zero. Would having this weight loss, 
be significant? Would having this average weight loss of 100 participants be significant? Uh, would this one be statistically significant, right? 5.6 pounds, would that be significant or statistically significant? Uh, would 14.7 pounds be statistically significant, a mean weight loss of 14.7 pounds? Assuming that we were expecting zero because we're assuming that it had no effect. So in other words, um, does this result, did this result, uh, is it very unlikely to occur by chance? So could this have happened by chance? Yeah, that's a mean weight loss, right? 0 0.34 pounds. Could that have been happened by chance? Uh, I'd say yes, because we're expecting zero, right? And, and 0.34 is not far enough from zero where we're, we're going to say yeah, that's a, that couldn't have happened by chance. So it probably did happen by chance because it's not far from zero. So this one, I'm going to say it's not statistically significant. Uh, this 5.6 pounds, this average weight of 5.6 pounds, I'm going to say that it is statistically significant. And here's the reasoning. We're expecting, right? We're assuming that the diet pill doesn't, has no effect and that the mean weight loss is zero. But then after six months, there was 5.6 pounds of mean average weight loss. So I don't think that could have, have occurred by random chance. Uh, so I'm going to say it's statistically significant. This third one, uh, definitely if 5.6 pounds is statistically significant, this one, I think it's pretty clear that if the diet pill was not effective, assuming that it was not effective, having 14.7 pounds uh, weight loss, average weight loss, probably did not um, occur by random chance, right? All right. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> So that's statistical significance. Now, now your your next question might be, well, where do we draw the line? Like, wh when do we know when it's far enough? Like, five point six pounds is far from is is like pretty far from zero. But but where do we draw the line, right? And then fourteen point seven pounds is definitely a very far from zero. <clears throat> so where do we draw the line? So that's what we're gonna talk later about later in the semesters. But for now. We're, I'm just going to give you guys like uh, pretty, so in my view, pretty obvious examples, right? This is obviously f too far from zero that it probably didn't occur by random chance. All right, so that's statistical significance. Go for it. Yeah, for the for for now, you're just <clears throat> you're you're gonna use like, I, and and again, I use the word obvious, uh, but you know what's obvious to some people aren't isn't obvious to others, especially given your experience with. Yeah, I got ten out of mm -hmm. ten uh, after two attempts, but I'm not clear the concept. The concept is not clear in my mind. Like, okay, uh, do do you recall what problem it was on? Uh, it's on last, I think, so eighth and ninth question. On okay. So let me take a look at it. I'll go ahead and give you guys the answer here. Um, yeah. So here it says, determine whether the results appears to have statistical significance, right? Statistical significance. Again, statistical significance is where, uh, wait up one second, is where you get a result that is very unlikely to occur by chance, right? Very unlikely to occur by chance. So would the following be, statistical significance a study was done on a, a on a clinical method used to increase the chances of a baby girl being born a girl i'm sorry a baby being born a girl right so we have this uh, method that would increase the chances or hopefully increase the chance of of a baby being born a girl in the study we have 1200 parents who received the method and gave birth to 827 girls um, versus 373 girls. Assume, 
Again, we're assuming that girl and boy births are equally likely. So there's a 50-50 chance of having a boy or a girl. Would the following be, the, would the result of 827 girls out of uh, 1,200 parents be statistically significant? Well, if we assume that girls and boy, boy girl and boy, uh, boy births are equally likely, 50-50 chance, then uh, of 1,200 parents, uh, or in 1,200 births, we should expect half of them to be girls and half to be boys, right? But then after they went through this clinical method, the result was at 827, there was 827 girls. So now you got to ask yourself, could that result have been occurred by, um, you know, chance? So again, is it that result, is it, it's, is it very unlikely to occur by chance? I think so because we were expecting from our assumption that girl and boy births are equally likely, 50-50 chance, we were expecting 600 uh, girls, right? Half of them to be girls, half to be boys. But then the result was 827 girls. I mean, that is so far from 600 that I think that it's, um, you know, I think it's statistically significant because that couldn't have happened by random chance. So if it didn't happen by random chance, what we what we do in statistics is we say, well, it must have been the method that they were using that caused this to, you know, occur. Does that make sense? Is that a little bit more clear? Yeah. And and let's go ahead and go to question nine and we'll talk about it as well. Actually, it's it's the same type. <laughs> so. Yeah, just the numbers are different. So. Okay, so hopefully that uh, that was pretty, or that kind of helped you guys. Okay, so <clears throat> the next question, section here is, um, this is more pre-skill. Uh, this is like more of the uh, 211S part, the support part. Uh, so throughout the entire semester, we're going to be working with like fractions, decimals, and percent. And fraction, decimals, and percents are, they're just the same uh, representing the same value using different formats right what do i mean by that uh, what i mean is when you have like say one half right um one over two that is a fraction uh and if and we can represent that in decimal form right what's the decimal form of one half so it's 0 0.5 right or i could have written it as 0 0.5 you're going to see me write it as 0 0.5 sometimes you're going to see me put the zero sometimes it's the same thing. All right, and then we can convert, we can convert that decimal into a percentage. So one half as a fraction, or um, I'm sorry, the fraction one half as a decimal is 0 0.5. As a percentage, that's gonna be 50%. Right, so now let me go, let me do some example, some of these, and you guys can do uh, the others on your free time. Uh, but for the sake of this uh, video, I'm just going to do a, uh, uh, do some of them. So the way that you convert a fraction into a decimal is the following. You would always do the following when you convert a fraction into a decimal, right? We're going to view this fraction as a division problem. So that's going to be, this is the numerator, right? The top number is numerator. This is a denominator. We're always going to do numerator divided by denominator so in this case 5 divided by 12 to change it into a decimal all right so let me pull up my calculator and show you guys how to input that so i have my ti84 here so to change it into a decimal we're going to do oops let me try that again so we're going to go 5 divided by 12 right try it again 12 and then enter and here's my answer. So it's a it's a non-terminating decimal. So in other words, what that means is it's just a decimal that goes on and on and on and on. All right, so if we have that, we always have a round off instruction. So the instruction here says round answer to two decimal places. So round answers to two decimal places. All right, so here's how you find, so when you're rounding, the first step is you wanna find the round off um, spot, right? The round off place. So two decimal places is, okay, so is the, to the right of the decimal, we have, this is the first, this is the second. So that's, this is the, the round off spot for two decimal places. For rounding for two decimal places, the one here is the round off spot. Now, to determine whether 
and, and what rounding means is we're just going to decide whether this one is going to stay the same or it's going to whether it's going to increase one more, right? Whether it's going to increase to a two. So to make that decision, we got to ask for, we got to look at the place value to the right. So the place value to the right of the one here is this thousands place, which is this six, right? And the rule is if it's five or more, this gets increased to one digit higher. If it's four or less, it gets uh, it stays the same, right? So in this case, um, it's going to increase to a two because the six here is five or more. So your answer <coughs> rounded to two decimal places is 0 0.42. Now again, sometimes you're gonna see me write it as 0 0.42. That's absolutely okay. We don't need the zero. Uh, you can omit the zero there if you want. <clears throat> All right. So now the next step is now we need to write it as a percentage and to to write to change it to a percentage. It's the easiest if you change the decimal into a percentage. Now, when when you're working this out, I would not change this answer to a decimal to a, a percentage because this is a rounded off uh, value. So I would change this into a percentage. And how do I change a decimal into a percentage? we're going to multiply by 100%, right? So we're just multiply by 100 in this case. So to change a decimal into a percentage, you're going to multiply the decimal by 100, right? So in this case, this is what we get. This is the percentage. Um, and then we round to two decimal places like the instruction suggested, right? It says if needed. Okay, so the, the second decimal place would be, let's see, one, two, would be this six. So now, now we got to ask ourselves, well, does it six stay the same or does it get increased one more? Well, to make that determination, we're going to look at the digit to the right, right? The six here. So this six is five or more. So that's going to boost up this six to uh, seven. So the answer would be 41.67%. Uh, All right. Uh, any questions on that before we um, I look at another one? <clears throat> Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so now uh, this is the same type, you know, you would do the same thing. This isn't the same as well. Let, let me go ahead and do, um, say this one right here. So this one, I have a decimal and see how I have the X here. I don't want you to go from decimal to a fraction because we, we hardly do that in this class. I don't think we ever do that in this class, um, but we are going to change this decimal into a, a percent. So to change a decimal into percent, we would just take this number, right? 0.327 and multiply by 100 and then that's the that's the percent form so 32.7 percent now we did not need to round to two decimal places because it wasn't needed so we just leave it like that right and then um, let's go from what about if we go from percent to decimal like what what would we do there so when we go from percent to decimal it's just the opposite. Instead of multiplying by 100, we're going to divide, right? So for example, like let's just take this this again. If we want to go from this percent to that, we would just uh, we would just do 32.7 divided by 100, right? To to go from here back to here. So likewise, if we take this percent um, to change it to a decimal, we're just going to divide by 100. Oops. There we go. So the answer there would be uh, 0.857. Um, this is not the answer. Why is this not the answer? Think about it. You have to move the decimal. Well, I've already moved the decimal, but I need to... Around. Yeah, the instruction says to round to two decimal places. So... Um, if this was a homework problem, you got to follow the round off instruction. So here's a round off spot, right? That's one, two. And the, the seven here is going to increase the five uh, to a six. So the answer would be 0.86 if the instruction says to round to two decimal places. So kind of be aware of that. You, you got to be uh, masters of rounding. You got to be masters of moving between fraction decimals and percents. All right, so that's that. So that's basic fraction decimal percent. 
the problems that you're going to see um, on your homework is more of along this line. So let me go ahead and do a couple of them or maybe just one. So a definition, a proportion, you're going to hear that word a lot in this class. <clears throat> a proportion is a part of the group that belongs to a category of interests, which sounds a lot like uh, fraction, right? And that's kind of like the, the definition of fraction as well. Uh, so a proportion can be represented it in, in this class is it's we use decimal form, but it can be represented with uh, percent and fraction as well. That's why we, we talk about these three forms. All right. So the uh, problem is in a survey, 537 out of 1029 respondents approve of the president's job performance. Find the proportion of those who approve of the president. Round your answer to two decimal places if needed. Okay, so there are multiple ways to do this problem, but I'm going to show you one method that it's not the easiest or m method to work out, but it's a method that if you follow, you're going to get, um, it works for most situations. So that's the method I'm going to show you guys. So the method is the following. Uh, you're going to, um, here's an equation. So part over uh, whole <clears throat> equals percent over 100. So this problem is ideal when you're dealing with a problem involving percentages, which is just a type of uh, proportion, right? It's, um, it's one way we can represent proportion. So using this formula, you can solve most problems that you're going to see. And again, it's this is not the only way to do it, but this is just one way uh, that can solve a lot of these problems. There's actually easier ways, but I find that students, uh, they some students find it easier, some students find it more confusing. So this way is probably the best way you can use so that you don't confuse yourself. So let me go ahead and, and work this one out. So in this type of, using this method, <clears throat> you're going to set up this equation, right? And then you're going to identify each of these uh, different values. The 100 here is built in, so you're going to always just put it as 100, right? It comes from just this being a percentage, you have 100 on the denominator here. So now you got to ask yourself, do I know the part? Uh, let's see, 537 out of 1029. So this looks like it's the whole, right? It's the total. And this looks like it's the part. So that's 1029 is the whole. And 537 is the part. Uh, do I know the percentage? I actually don't, right? The percentage here is actually the proportion that I'm looking for. So I'm going to represent that with a variable. Let's say x. That's my unknown. So now this becomes an algebra problem, right? This is an algebraic problem. Um, <clears throat> and the way we solve this problem is, if you guys recall, if those of you guys who took algebra, uh, we're going to cross multiply, right? We're going to multiply like this, cross multiply. So on one side of the equation, we get 1,029 times x. So on one side, we get that, right, equals. On the other side, we're going to cross multiply. <clears throat> 537 times 100, we get 537, 0, 0. Okay. And then from here, if you guys recall from algebra, those of you guys who took algebra, we understand that there's multiplication going on right here between the, the 1029 and the x. And we're going to use inverse operation to solve for it, right? We want to get x by itself, or in algebra we say uh, we want to isolate the variable x. And to do that, we're going to divide by, we're going to divide, right? So multiplication, x was being multiplied by 1029. We're going to divide by 1029. <clears throat> and now if you guys remember from algebra, whatever you do on one side, if you change the value on one side of the equation, you got to do it on the other side <clears throat> so that the equation is balanced, right? Okay. So on the left side, the 1029 cancels out the 1029. We're left with x, right? 1029 over 1029 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then on the right side, let's go ahead and work that out on the calculator. Uh, so that's going to be 537. Oops, try it again. 537.00 divided by 1029. Okay, and then that's what we get as a percentage. And we know that the instruction says to round off to two decimal places. So the second decimal place would be, let's see, that's one, two. So that's going to be the eight. So the six here is going to increase the eight to a nine. All right, so 
The answer here is 52.19%. That's the proportion. And now we can write this as a, a decimal, right? Let's say the, the instruction on the homework said, hey, I want a decimal. So as a decimal, this would be, uh, this would be 0.52, right? Okay, any questions on this particular problem? Okay, so I don't see any questions at all. Um, I'm actually going to mute you guys because I'm recording uh, just so that there's not no background noise. If you need to speak up, uh, please unmute yourself. Uh, so, <clears throat> I just use a little, I just kind of did it in my head, right? We, we know that when we're, we're moving from um, percent to decimal, we're going to divide by 100. Yeah, so I would just go like the, uh, I would, I, I would actually take this and then I would divide it by 100. And I'd get that. And then I rounded it to two decimal places. So this would be the second decimal place. The one here would not increase the two to a three, so it'd say a two. So that's how I got the 0 0.52. And some of you guys may remember a little trick. Instead of dividing by 100, the same thing of doing that is moving the decimal point two times to the left. And that's kind of what I did in my head. All right. Okay, so that's the end of 1.1. So I'm going to stop this recording, and I'm going to open it up for questions.